Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Another episode of Shop Talk slash Surprise. We are in Elkhart, Indiana. I got the best wingman you could ask for on a road trip right here. Hello! And if you guys know anything about Elkhart, Indiana, uh, they're very famous for one thing. I'm Sydney Power. <laughs> and yeah, we'll find out what that is in a little bit. Stay tuned. We made it. It was a uh, seven hour drive from Buffalo, but we are here and this is more than a year in progress to pick this up. So obviously, I'm sure you've got a little bit of an impression of what it is. I'm not gonna reveal all the details. Let's go see where it is on the lot and let's go through it together. But been waiting on it for over a year. I ordered this uh, back in June of 2021. And uh, I'm super excited. Let's go see. All right, so we found it. Here it is. We can go inside in a minute. But it is a 13 and a half foot tall, 30 foot long, silver frost stacker trailer with three 8,000 pound gross vehicle weight trailers. Uh, three three 8,000 pound gross vehicle weight axles, which give it a 24,000 pound gross vehicle weight. Now, obviously that's a lot more than my truck can pull, but it's empty now. The tongue weight's about 1,500 pounds and the empty weight's about 12,000 pounds. Um, so we shouldn't have a problem getting it home. It's not gonna be enjoyable in the slightest, um, but yeah. This is it. Let's start going through our punch list of everything that we ordered on the trailer to make sure that everything that we ordered and specified was done and was included. And then go over and see if there's any discrepancies. And that's why I decided to make the seven hour trip to come and pick it up myself. Yes, I could have had it delivered for a small nominal fee, um, but you know, I built this trailer to very specific specifications that I wanted and I didn't want to get it back home and then go through it and find out, oh, this wasn't done right, that wasn't done right. I want to be here, I want to go through it all and I want to be aware of it so that way we can address any issues at the time. Um, I would highly, highly recommend picking up your stuff yourself if it's reasonable and if you can do it. So let's go inside, get our paperwork, start going through it. What is it? What is this? Yeah, so this is the inside. We got all our workstation with a bag of goodies. We've got all of our tags that we're going to need to take it home. I've got the build quote as well as the 3D drawings and bill of materials for the sale. So let's start going through stuff. You want to do a video with me? All right, guys. So we just finished going through our build sheet, our bill of materials, our configurator, and double checking everything. Sorry, she wants to talk. And everything that we uh, spec on the trailer is on the trailer. So how about we take everyone on a little tour of the trailer and show them what everything is? Yeah, but can I hold it? Okay. You gotta give me a second though, okay? You gotta do this, turn it. All right, so show them the top. Here's the top, guys. So when you're starting out, something that um, when I go to racetracks, a lot of the racetracks that I go to, I have noticed that I spend a lot of time finding good parking spots in the paddock, and there aren't a lot of good watchtowers in a lot of uh, places that I go to. So I wanted the viewing deck option on the top of this trailer. So you can bring your chairs up here, you can set your railing up, and you can look at the track or put your spotters up here or whatever is needed. I figure it's it, it's a relatively inexpensive option that I probably realistically won't use a lot, but when you need it and when you want it, it's gonna be amazing. And again, I, 
I built this trailer as my forever trailer. This thing is going to last a very long time as far as I'm concerned. Let's go in. So, all right, let's go down below. We're starting top down. Let's go down below. Let's, let's put all these safety rails down so they're all stowed and they're all ready for trailering. And then let's go down the roof hatch and show you what the inside looks like. So there's the escape hatch that we just came off the roof with the ladder. Ladder takes you all the way to the ground. And up here, we've got an intermediary stop at our 10 foot long attic where we have got an onboard air compressor, spare tired, and opted for airline track everywhere in this trailer for a lot of spare parts, totes, tools, tires. I don't want to ever have to tie something down and not be able to do it. So we got a lot of track, three on the floor, all the way around the perimeter, cove lighting up here. Um, additionally, we did, we went with the black cove lighting with the silver frost interior and exterior. And I think it looks amazing. Additionally, I downgraded the floor to the coin aluminum and we did this on both the attic and the floor down below as i've got this in my current trailer it's easy to clean it's easy to uh, work on it doesn't hurt your knees if you bend down on it like the extruded aluminum floors will do um, so i just like this option better and it's cheaper uh, i just you know i get a vacuum i get a swiffer you go through it once a month and it looks great it looks brand new um, the only thing that you do have to watch out is you will get like high, hot tire marks if you park hot tires on it. But primarily most of the stuff that we're gonna be tying down will be loaded onto the lift itself that comes directly off the track. Um, otherwise, it holds up really good. So here's the full trailer from above. Let's go down below and see what other goodies we ordered. All right, so now we are back on the first floor, right? Yeah. So let's go in through here. Just got a standard. Uh, I believe it's a 10 foot ramp with extension. Over here we've got our extension ramps for the lift to get a car onto that. That goes all the way up to the ceiling, we're good. It does go all the way to the ceiling. There's a little picture on this way. Over here we've got the uh, tie down strap holders. And then I had some specialty E-Track installed on the ceiling up there because I'm gonna mount two bars going across and that's where I'm gonna put a lot of spare tires or uh, rain tires or whatever. Again, same thing, airline track all over the walls. I also went with all the carpeted protection, airline tracks all over the floor, airline track everywhere is how I wanted this thing set up. Down here, we've got an airline quick release. These things are throughout. There's gonna be one up front. There's also gonna be one on the outside, just quick release for uh, for the air tank. I'm gonna carry uh, just like a small 20 foot extension airline so I can plug it anywhere in the trailer and it'll really help me out. Um, more outlets back here. Some switches, you got your ceiling lights, your lights under the lift, your exterior loading lights up there. I'm not sure if that is a good representational picture of them turning on or off. Um, additionally, I have a backup camera mounted up there that will plug into anything that pulls it. All right, so back down here, we've got a 14 foot lift with our 6,000 pound D-rings. Um, we've also got 6,000 pound D-rings throughout. There's eight of them on the main deck four of them on the lift. Again, I don't want to load anything in here and not be able to tie it down and feel secure about it. Then we went with a eight foot or nine foot escape hatch with a light on it as well. Uh, in case you're loading up or unloading at night, you got your two latches on the side, you got your strut assists, and then the fender liner comes off. There is a, uh, a silo on the other side of this on the outside, I'll show you so we can't open it. And then on this side, we just did a fuel jug holder all the way across um, if we have to carry any of our own fuel, as well as something special underneath for, uh, for fuel later. So up here, we've just got our boxes. This is our batteries. This is gonna be your winch with remote, 5,000 pounds. This right here is going to be your hydraulics for the lift, which operates on 12 volt, I was very pleasantly surprised that the lift, the winch, everything pretty much in this trailer can be run on 12 volts with the two batteries. The only thing that cannot be run on 12 volts is again, another quick connect up here for the air compressor. 
and we've got a 1.5 ton uh, dual inverter air conditioner that we put into this as well. Um, so just a little bit up here on the front. Let's take a step back. I decided to go with a little bit more cabinets than what we originally planned. Originally I was just going to do that front wall with cabinets, but then we realized afterwards I added the AC unit that it took away a lot of our top cabinets, so I wanted to add an L. Um, realistically, the only thing I'm ever going to be putting up here is going to probably be like a small four-wheeler or golf cart or anything like that is going to ever be really tied down up here. So I figured with, even with the L shape, I've got like six foot by eight foot, more than enough room for really anything that I want to do there. As well as, again, more airline track here. You got your ladder for the attic over there, as well as just a regular outlet. And then this is actually the outlet for the lift controls. So then we've got a nice big L-shaped countertop, tons of cabinets with the two built-in large and small tool chests. And, uh, Dad, look at this. What are we looking at? <gasps> now open it, what's in there? So we went with the black and here just to kind of match the floor. I love that, that these big ones like this, they're all pass-through cabinets. You can put a lot of stuff down here. Um, nice, nice doors, everything, you know, that we went through, I really focused on quality. Um, we got your lights in the ceilings, and again, ceilings, walls, everything matches the silver frost um, exterior. In here, you've got your hydraulics for the front tongue jack, as well as your power cord. They even give you a nice little tongue uh, scale, so you can weigh the trailer for yourself, which is nice. You got your inverter. Opening it all up. And then up here, we just got some standard outlets with USBs, another one over there. Um, <laughs> as well as uh, just a standard radio. Slight disappointment on this radio. 2022, guys, the radio's not Bluetooth. That to me, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's just a single DIN. You could put some keys in here, you could pull this out, you could pop something in for 100 bucks and have Bluetooth. It should all plug in with your wiring harness. But 2022, this is my money for a trailer. No Bluetooth radio. Um, that kind of caught me as a little shocking, but whatever. And his huh. personal ladder. Are we missing anything? No. We've gone over everything? Yes. You sure? Well, except the lights. Except the lights. Well, there's a lot of lights, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, last thing is we've got a, a weather curtain, a cold weather curtain. That is going to hang across the top of our 48 inch door over here, just to kind of help um, keep the heat out on warm days, keep the heat in on cold days, uh, depending on what you're doing. All right guys, last but not least, we are on the outside. As, as you can see with that rear ramp door, it is a massively tall trailer on the outside. So. Out here we have got our rear loading lights up there which are activated on the inside. We went over that we've got a rear view camera, the ramp, all of our backup lights, license plate holder light. Over on the front here we've got side um, load in lights, side spotlights, two of them they are dimmable. We put a 20 foot awning on the trailer as well as a bunch of exterior power outlets, um, turn signals, side docking lights. Another thing that we did with this trailer was I went with the 8,000 pound axles. Um, when we were originally building the trailer, I started getting worried about my available payload. And the 7,000 pound axles that are on this, they give you a 21,000 uh, pound gross vehicle weight. But the trailer itself is going to weigh about 11,000, 12,000 pounds. So that's only 8,000 pounds of cargo. I wanted, you know, the additional 3,000 on top of that. So I've got an 11,000 pounds of available cargo on this trailer. Um, another thing that we did here is that track fuel is very expensive. Track fuel is very, very expensive. So now I've got an onboard 40 gallon fuel tank in between the axles of this trailer and there's a pump up front so I can bring my fuel jugs um, as well as bring my own 40 gallons into any track that I want and not have to worry about, you know, buying fuel at the track. So, and we, they did go with the 17 and a half um, tires on here, looks like the max singles, 22,180 kilograms, which is going to be 4,805 pounds. Um, so these things are rated for a lot. All right, 
Ah, lastly, over here, we went with a 48 inch wide door with the step that pulls out into a ramp. So the whole idea was that if we ever have an ATV or a cart or something, I can side load it in here and not have to worry about taking what's inside the trailer out first. Um, so it's, um, we'll see if it actually can use a practicality, but it made sense at the time. 48 inch door. Over here, we did go with the additional 12 inches of trailer tongue. Right here, we've got our LG uh, one and a half uh, ton air conditioning unit, which is mounted up here. Down here, we've got our Voyager camera system for the back. Then over here, we've got our equalizer up, down electric uh, for hitching up, raising and lowering the trailer. We've got our 50 amp service plug, as well as they also give you a nice jump block for the trailer. On this side, this is going to be your uh, your curb side. This is where your escape door is right there that you will open up. And we got this teeny tiny little thing right here. And this is our fuel station. You got your gauge up here. You've got to turn the pump on and off. And you've got the pump itself with a grounding strap, which is really nice to have a grounding strap. So. Last but not least, so like I said, here is, here's the silo. It's kind of close. We can't really open the escape door. I'll, uh, I'll get a picture of this open when we hit the road, but it's pretty simple. You just pop these up and then the entire thing swings up. Uh, so that way when you load cars in, all of this is open. So you can open up your cars. You can get out of the cars. You can tie them down and then close it all up when everything's loaded. And then another docking light down here for the reverse turn signals. Um, down here too, you can see, we'll do a hole underneath the trailer later, but this actually, you can put a, uh, a socket in here and it's got rear stabilizing uh, landing gear. That's excellent. Let's get under here real quick for you guys, why not? Um, so on the back here too, we also did the casters on the rear. And this is what the underside of a new Intech trailer looks like. This is all aluminum, all of it. Then you got your big axles all mounted with your brakes. Super clean, super nice construction. They did a great job. Um, very happy with it. So, yeah. All right, hey, Sid, what do we do now? Um, Come here. What do we do now? The interview is that we should go now and get ready to go and do my salon. Bye. Okay. Do you think maybe we should get the hitch out and we should hitch it up to the truck and leave? Yeah. I think we're done. Let's do that. Yeah. All right. We're going to hitch it up. All right, guys. So we got home super late last night. And um, that was probably the sketchiest tow of my entire life. Um, trailer's light. We went over the scales. Uh, 10,600 pounds is the uh, unloaded vehicle weight. About 1,200 pounds of that is on the hitch. So just to give you, a, I use a Gen Y torsion hitch. Um, I love it. Oh, there, there, there she is. Um, got into every bug known to man in Northern PA, Southern New York. And yeah, it, uh, it wasn't a weight issue. It was the fact that it's a long bumper pull trailer on a single wheel uh, truck that basically just acts like a parasail behind you while you're driving. But uh, we went slow. I think I set the cruise at like 60 miles an hour. Hello, and studio. we just kind of went there. Um, so yeah, we got it home. It's time to do some, uh, some driveway organization, get them pulled in behind one another. Uh, Cause this trailer that we, uh, the stacker that we just picked up, there's a little bit of work that we have to do to it to get it ready for the year. We're probably not gonna really use it until next year. Um, for a couple of reasons. One of those is it actually going to be because that truck is not supposed to be pulling this. I only went and got it with this. I knew that I was going to go slow because I needed to get it home. I didn't want to pay a transport company because again, I wanted to pick it up. I wanted to make sure everything worked um, while we were going over there. So it's just going to sit in the driveway probably for the next hmm, six to seven months until next year. Um, what's going to actually be towing it is supposed to come in around December of this year. So that video will be coming as well as the toy hauler will be up for sale um, in a couple of months as well. And there's going to be um, 
on the channel there's a video of this toy hauler how i've been using it for the last three years and how i've been loading the car into it and just kind of situating all my stuff so that's going to be on the channel in a week or two when i get around to editing all the videos actually by the time you see this it's already going to be on the channel just because of sequence of events so thanks for hanging out with us any questions on the trailer why i optioned what i optioned with it why i decided to go with this um, anything at all that you guys want to see, please let me know and I'll put it on the channel. So thanks for sticking with me. You guys have a great day.